this tutorial, we're going to introduce you to groups, and I'm going to use a wait queue to show you how you can do some cool stuff with groups as well. The group queue is located in the upper left-hand corner of the tools in QLab. Uh, to access that, you just click on it. It'll add a group queue to your workspace. There's four modes for the group queue. You can access that if it's not visible by clicking here and dragging up on this. Uh, make sure that you are in edit mode as opposed to show mode, which will hide that ability. Um, the mode options are start first child and enter into group, which is the default. And you can tell each mode by the shape of the queue, group queue here. This one again would be the start first child, enter into group. If we'd go ahead and add another one, and we'll have that one be start first child and go to next queue. So that is a square one. Add another one here and start all children simultaneously. That'll be square green. And then lastly, start random child and go to next queue. And that one will be a square purple. So square blue, the normal one is just uh, a little curvy edges to it there. So for example, um, if we had a whole bunch of songs or queues and we want to organize them, that's what is great about group queues because you can bring them into certain areas and organize your workspace and help kind of figure out where things should go. Um, an easy way, I'm going to go ahead and delete these for now. I uh, selected all four of them by holding down the shift key and then command delete uh, is an easy way to get rid of them. So I'm just going to drop in some audio into, uh, into here. Put in four audio tracks. And say we wanted to put them into a group. Easiest way to do that is just make sure they're selected. Again, an easy way to select them is to hold click on one, hold down the shift key, move down to the last one you want to select, and click again. You can also hold down the command key to choose just ones that you want in different orders and click and add things that way. That's easier. And then when you click on the group queue, it'll automatically add whatever is selected into a, a group for you. Then you can double click here and name that. We'll call it music. So it really doesn't affect this in any way right now because all it's done is organize, organize this for us. And you can click this little triangle to hide or unhide it. Uh, I like to color them different colors so it kind of helps me understand where I am and what group is doing what. Um, so if we fire this right now, it'll basically just start playing the first song and go the go to will go to the next thing in the list so none of the auto follow or follow is enabled and all that stuff so it's really just a clean easy way to organize stuff so let's change the mode of this group and show you how that affects different things so for example we're going to change the mode now to start first child and go to next queue so say we had uh, some other cues. Let's put in a, a lighting cue. I use MIDI notes to turn on and off lights. So say we wanted to kind of start this music playing and we wanted it to kind of keep playing all these different songs, one in order. We just kind of tell it by, um, I'll change its mode, its auto continue mode to uh, auto follow. So when the song's over, it'll go to the next one. Same thing for this one. Same thing for this one. And uh, this one here will uh, just just sort of end. It'll, it'll end it. Or actually, let's have it loop back up to the top because that'll just keep doing the cycle over and over again. So to do that, we'll just have it uh, play. Tell it to put in a play cue here and tell it to go back up and play this first song here. But because we have the mode set to start first child and go next cue, this will just be a loop on its own and will just automatically go through and play itself over and over again. And it, when we fire this, it'll jump right down and go to MIDI note on here uh, and then just completely play this loop whenever we want it to go. So let's hit play. And so when we hit the go button again, it's just going to target this MIDI note on cue and we don't have to think about this anymore. Now you can stop this entire group from playing um, by targeting the whole group itself, which is nice and convenient. We're going to do, let's do a fade cue on it because uh, that'll clean up and slowly fade out the whole thing without having to have an abrupt cutoff on it or whatever. And again, you just click on the, the group and you can drag and drop it onto the fade cue itself. 
You'll notice we still have a red X, and that's because we haven't told the fade queue what to fade, uh, what parameters to fade. We've told it what to fade, which is 0.5 queue number, which is our, our group here. And so we'll just go into uh, levels, and we'll click and drag the master up and down a little bit, which will tell us that we are targeting this and that we want to affect the levels to zero. And I will have it stop target when done. So let's start this again. I've clicked on the active cues tab over here to show us what's playing. We have this cue right here playing. So now I'm gonna, I'll hit go, which will move us through this lighting cue thing using a MIDI note on. And now we're ready to do the fade cue, which will fade out everything in this group that's playing. It'll fade that out. And when it's done its fade, it will stop the cue, which stops the whole group itself. So let's change modes again. And this time let's start start all children simultaneously. Now that is going to play all of these, all of this stuff at once, including this play cue, which will probably loop it back up and make it play everything all over again. I have no idea what's going to happen. Let's see what happens and uh, all hell should break loose here though. So basically just played all four audio songs all at once there. Um, luckily it didn't just continue to loop this whole thing and start thousands of them all at once. Um, but this is also useful for many reasons um, with this, this mode because it, uh, it gives you the ability to fire a whole bunch of stuff at once, whether it's a bunch of notes you need to do for lighting, uh, a sound cue, a bunch of stuff at once can all simultaneously be fired. Another one of my favorite modes is start random child and go next cue. So if you wanted to mix things up and you had a whole bunch of music in here and you wanted it to be different every time it started to play, that's a great way to uh, to do this. So for this I removed the play cue in here to see if that would help us generate random hits here. There we go. So now that we just have the four songs in here and we click on it and our mode is start random child go next cue, it'll randomly play a different song in here every time we do that. It is random, so you never know where it's going to go. Here it goes. <laughs> and that takes care of the different modes that you have. So how can we use these in these cues in real in real life? I use them for organizing. You can use them for, you know, randomly accessing music. So here's a workspace I built to show you how powerful groups can be. Particularly in this set, I'm going to be using a start first child and go to next queue group right here and a wait queue. So say you had two routines and one of them, you have a song that you need to use over and over again until you've completed whatever that routine involved. For me, I need this exact scenario. So I put a video cue in here just to play a video to kind of show us where we are. I'm going to go ahead and put in the audition window so that I can see this cue play without obscuring the whole workspace area here. And again, we have a video cue that's going to play and that's going to enter into this the group that we have. Its mode is set to start first child and go to next cue. So it comes in here and it fires this stuff and then moves on to 45.7 song one and starts to play song one. However, there's a wait queue in here and this wait queue stops the sequence inside this group from continuing for 30 seconds. And that's where this whole time is here. So what's happening is it comes in, it resets this wait time timer to 30 seconds. And now this timer is trapped and stuck right here, even though we've now moved on and we're playing song one. So song one is playing and the go to the head, the playhead goes down here to 45.8, which when I hit go on this, it'll fade out song one and it'll go back up. It'll fade back up song one. It'll go to the fade out cue here. So it'll put it back in place here so that when we go ahead and hit go again, it'll refade out this song again and create a loop that we want. And then finally, it'll play this group right here again, which will reset the timer and tell it to wait. And we're going to wait another 30 seconds before we move on. So what happens if we if we go past 30 seconds? 
the wait time after this is finished, it'll move on. It'll stop song one, fade it out and stop it. It will go down here and play routine two. So it'll jump into this group here, which we have this group set just as start first child and enter into group just to organize that. So it'll come down here, it'll play video one because that is the first cue inside this group. And it'll jump down and it'll fade and stop video one, which is back up here. And then this cue here, this cue here tells the playhead to go right here to song two. So the playhead will be here in position to wait to be triggered when it's needed again. So let's go ahead and fire this and see what happens. So we hit go and the video starts. So now we're going to start the timer. Timer starts. It's going to wait 30 seconds. The cue that, that's below it is now playing. The next cue we're going to hit will fade out that song. It'll fade it back up again and it'll go up and play it again from back going back to here and it'll get the playhead will go back to this fade cue here right here so we hit go fades out fades the song back up again starts to play again and it resets that timer back to 30 second countdown again you can change how much time how you see the time here by clicking on these uh this information here which will change whether you're seeing it going up or going down so I hit go again resets the time again. Now this time we're going to let it go past the 30 seconds and you'll see it change from this area here and it's going to fire this new these three cues right here instead of what it was firing before. We're getting coming up on it now. So it fades out the video, fades up the other video, all the other stuff stops, and then when we hit the go command, it'll start song two here. And this creates a really powerful way to automatically move on in sequences and playlists and just different things when you're, when you're finished it'll automatically take care of uh, the heavy lifting for you so you don't have to think about it and you can get back to doing your show. I hope that helped. It's a lot of information in there, but I uh, hope it taught you something and uh, enjoy the powerful groups.